Hello everyone, welcome back to Educate We Geography. Today we're going to give an introduction to geologic time. We have an example of a geologic time scale to the bottom left of your screen. Um, in case you didn't know, geologic time, or on a scale, it's basically just a way to measure the relative history of the different species and organisms that have lived on our planet over the last 4 billion, 4.5 billion years. The first life form did originate about 3.5 billion years ago, and it's just a way to organize them into different groups based on like when they lived, and just it just divides history in a way that explains that. Now, today's objectives, uh, first of all, we're going to quickly go over the importance of fossils. It's important to know details about fossils and their importance if you want to get a better understanding of the origins of the scale because they are heavily interti intertwined topics. We're going to talk about the actual origins and like how it came into being, its importance. We're um, going to describe the different components of the scale, such as like how to read the scale properly and how, why it's organized in the way it is. We're going to mention important events that have occurred at various parts of the scale. Um, this, as I mentioned earlier, the scale is divided into um, different eras and periods, based sometimes based on historical events such as mass extinctions, the emergence of certain species. So we're just going to talk about which species emerged at what times and different events that mark the end of certain eras. Also, we're going to try out a couple of practice questions, just review questions to make sure that you're understanding everything. If you don't do well on those, you can always just go back and watch the video where we explain things. Everything in the practice questions is explained in this video. Okay, that does it for the today's objectives. Um, first of all, we're just going to talk about what fossils are really quickly. Um, fossils are the preserved remains of an ancient organism. It doesn't necessarily have to be the actual organism itself. Many of you might know as an example, like dinosaur bones is a fossil, and that's a pretty good example. But it's not necessarily the actual physical remains. It can always just be um, this imprints left, like a footprint, for instance, or like the imprint of a body. Um, they can be found in various sizes, from microscopic to massive. The reason I mention this is because a lot of people, I mentioned the examples of dinosaurs, when they think of fossils, they think of these gigantic, big rocks of this enormous creatures. It, they can be microscopic also. And the first life forms that originated 3.5 billion years ago or so, they weren't obviously big. They were microscopic. They were unicellular organisms that were not very complex. So that's we needed to study those to get a better understanding of that. The oldest fossils, I just mentioned this, are more than 3 billion years old. This shows you how long life has been around on this planet, which is truly amazing. Uh, what do fossils tell us? So first of all, they give us information about the characteristics of past species. This is a pretty obvious one. For instance, we can learn about the size of a, of a given organism that we find a fossil of. We can talk about its length. We can guess its weight. Maybe on rare occasions, we can talk about its like physical appearance in terms of color, etc. We can infer the behaviors of preserved organisms based on what their fossil looks like. So, for instance, if a fossil seems kind of mangled up, we can guess that maybe the organism that we're looking at, maybe it died by getting crushed or being trampled, for instance. We can guess by, like, the way, like, if it's, like, footprints. If the fossil isn't, like, the actual organism, if it's just a footprint, we can talk about how it might have run or moved around the land. So, yeah. Beyond that, this isn't this one is important when we're talking about geologic time specifically. We can learn about infer, we can learn about how the land and surrounding environment was based on fossils. So this one, I'm going to give a pretty specific example. Um, imagine you're in a desert and you somehow like stumble upon you're like digging for fossils and you stumble upon a fossil of a trilobite or some marine animal from several hundred million years ago. You know, in, unless someone moved that fossil there, like it's it's a sea animal or a marine animal. So that means there must have been some sort of water in that area in that time. So we can learn about what, like how the land was in past, like in past times. That's just an example. Um, Before we get into the geologic time scale, we have to talk about the law of superposition. Um, You'll see why this is related on like the next few slides. But basically, it's just a general rule that sedimentary rocks, so basically just rocks in general, that's what you have to know. But the ones that are found at deeper levels are older than ones that are found higher up. And how does this connect to fossils? This means that generally fossils that are found at greater depths, so fossils that you're going to find deeper in the ground, 
they're generally speaking going to be older than those higher up. I say generally because sometimes there are instances where this is not true. There can be deformations in the land, for instance, that cause like the higher, like less deep land to like sink below the bottom parts. But that's this is just a general rule, and it was used pretty. It was this is it's one of the basis of geologic time, as you'll come to see. This is an illustration of that. Um, as you can see, the youngest, and this is again just like very general. It's like basic. It's um the youngest rocks or like if there were fossils in this rock they would be younger than the ones found in Torres here because this is deeper and it makes sense if you think about it because the reason these rocks are above the ones that are deeper is because they were they were deposed at later times so these have to be younger than the ones here yeah I don't know why that's spun like that <laughs> um so how does this connect to geologic time? Well, I mean, by analyzing patterns in fossils, such as their depths, we just talked about the wall of superposition and general location, so like where they were, like where certain groups of fossils are found more often. We can get like a rough sketch of when and where certain species were alive relative to others. So we can basically just like paint a picture of what life was like in the past just by knowing, just by seeing these patterns in fossils, which is truly amazing. And it's a basis of the geologic time scale, as we we're going to talk about. Um, the origins of geologic time. Are, um, okay, so the scientists, um, they found trends in the types of rocks and like where certain fossils were found. Like the types of rocks where like fossils tend to be found and like the depths at which they were recovered, so like different patterns. So this meant that like they could create a relative scale of which organisms were alive before and after others. So if you like you look at a global picture of like scientists like ex excavating fossils, the ones that were found at deeper depths throughout the world or in certain locations, like if you have one organism that was found at like always found in like super deep depths, and then you have another organism that's found less deep like throughout the world, you can infer, or scientists can infer that that species, the one that was found deeper is going to be older. And based on that, they can kind of make like a relative scale of like which organisms were alive before and after others. So yeah, this is just going to give like an example of that. So around the world, mammal fossils have been uncovered before the oldest reptile fossils. So what can we infer from that based on the law of superposition? I mean, we can guess that those mammals lived more recently in were preserved more recently because they were found at less deep depths. So obviously, it's more complicated than that. This is kind of a simplification of it, but this is a general truth behind mammals. Mammals, the oldest mammals are definitely younger by hundreds of millions of years than the oldest reptiles. So, an important development in geologic time. It's um first, I just talked about. I just mentioned a relative scale because at first scientists didn't know the actual age of different fossils. Like they didn't, they couldn't like look at a fossil and say this one's 300 million years old. They just knew their ages relative to like one another. So they could tell if one fossil was like younger than another one based on like, or they could guess at least based on the depth at which it was found. Like maybe also like the type of rock in which it was found. But they couldn't just point at a fossil and say it's like 250 million years old. That, that's not how it works. But now they actually can get a rough estimate of when certain life forms were around using radioactive dating. So they just test the presence of certain chemicals and elements in, um, not chemicals, but elements in a fossil or in a certain sample. And based on that, they can get a rough inference of how old it is. And if you look at geologic time scales now, we're going to look at some examples. Um, they do often have years in them, but that's not something that was around on early geologic time scales, like the 1800s. The reason being because they didn't have radioactive dating until 1905, I believe. So that's going to be, that, that was a new, newer discovery. Before this, geologic time was just a relative scale. Now it involves time. So the first geologic time scale with actual dates, it was published by Arthur Holmes in 1913. I'm just putting that out there for context. Um, the components of the geologic time scale, um, this is an example of one, you can see like the years on the right. These were, again, not a part of the original scale. They just added this once they knew how to um, properly date um, fossils using radioactive dating. And these are just like the eons, eras, and periods. We'll get into that. So it is divided into different categories, as I just mentioned, of time. It's uh, based on the, these like um, divisions like Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, it's based on the different types of species that were around in different periods. 
So like different periods, they, they're marked by like the types of species that were around during them and also like certain events that happened. For instance, at the end of the Crustaceous, we're going to get like a brief, we're going to go over like a brief overview of everything that's happened on the scale in just a second. But like the Crustaceous, for instance, it ended in an asteroid impact and that was like the shift from the Mesozoic to the Cenozoic and like the Crustaceous to the Tertiary periods. Um, don't worry about memorizing all of these. I say this because maybe your teacher wants you to memorize them, but I would be surprised if they would tell you to just memorize the plain order of them. I think it's more important to memorize or just have in mind certain important events that happen all along the way. We're going to go over these. But if your teacher tells you to memorize them, I would listen to your teacher, obviously, but I'd, I would be surprised, honestly. All right, so important periods and events to note that happen along the scale. I'm going to go over everything that happened, but I have some highlights written towards the side, things that you should pay like special attention to. Um, just know that, first of all, Archean, the Archean period right here. Um, I oh mean, the, what, the things getting in the way. Okay. Um, it's really like the first life. That, that's when life, that's what separates like the Archean is like when life first appeared. Pre-Archean means that's like no life. That was when there was no life around. That yeah, was pretty simple. Um, once you get to the Proterozoic era, the Archean Proterozoic, those like it kind of goes from like more like unicellular, completely unorganized, you know, organisms. So, the or organisms start getting a little more complex towards the Proterozoic era. They become non microscopic around that time, and it's just mostly algae and bacteria. Um, once you get to the Cambrian period, um, this is roughly 570 million years ago. I like the scale because it tells you the time. That's when you start getting fish and like many complex sea creatures. This was the biggest evolution boom, evol evolutionary boom, as you would call it, um, in history. So many new creatures appeared. Once you get towards the Ordovician period, you start getting um, vertebrates. Everything before then were like invertebrates. You didn't have like solid backbones, but you have vertebrates at that point. Um, towards the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian period, you start getting like land animals. Um, amphibians and also reptiles, which are animals that just live on land. So that's before then everything was in the sea. Um, Permian, it ended in the greatest mass extinction ever. 96% of marine species died. That's a number you might hear. Um, Mesozoic was dominated by dinosaurs and reptiles. These were around towards the end of the Paleozoic era, but Mesozoic, these are like, this is dominated by dinosaurs and reptiles. Um, you might have heard the phrase Jura or like the movie Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, that's based on the period. Interesting fact. Sadly, um, these dinosaurs didn't live into the Cenozoic. They died, presumably by an asteroid impact at the end of the Crustaceous. That's what separates, I mentioned earlier, the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic, the Crustaceous and the Tertiary periods. So yeah. And um, just the Ceno also I forgot to mention this just now. So like the Cenozoic was dominated by mammals. Um, the first mammals appeared around the Jurassic, but they weren't really dominant because of dinosaurs. They preyed on them usually, so like the dinosaurs preyed on the mammals. But this is really where mammals started taking over. And towards the we're right now in the Quaternary period. Um, that started with like around the time of like the first humans. So, yeah, some scales go into even more detail. Um, especially newer scales, they have these um periods called epochs. Epochs. Um, there's different pronunciations for them. They're basically, they only consist of the Cenozoic era, but it's just an even more detailed way to like divide the different organisms that were alive at different times. The one difference between the last scale and this scale, other than the epics, are, um, the, there's like other periods. They changed the, this is, I think it's like a more, it's a development in more modern, um, geologic time scales. They get rid of the tertiary period and they replace them with the Paleogene and the Neogene periods. Um, that's just a more modern distinction. If you have like a timeline at your in your elementary or middle school classroom, you might see either one. Just know that's a more modern distinction. Um, if your teacher does tell you to memorize the entire scale, I'd go with this one. Then this one seems to be more modern. Uh, so we're just going to go over some review questions, things that we covered in this video. This may be some new facts for you. Um, this is just a question. After what period did dinosaurs go extinct? Remember I said period, not era. Uh, you might be thinking Mesozoic era. That's that's an era. Talking about a specific period. It's the Crustaceous period. It was roughly 65 million years ago. That's a number that gets thrown out there a lot. 
All right, yeah. So um, next question, in which period did the first vertebrates appear? Um, again, which period, not which era? Just as a hint, before we get to the answer, the era was um, the Paleozoic era. It was the Ordovician period. Remember, vertebrates are just the species with the first um, backbones. And vertebrates just means backbones. Around which period did birds first appear? I don't think I mentioned this earlier, so this is going to be new content. Just as a hint, this came before the end of the dinosaurs, roughly, or actually around that time, I'm going to say. Yeah, there's different, um, there's some dispute between this. It's, um, some people say, um, crustaceous, some scientists say the tertiary, so amorphous, typically the paleogene. That's the, um, newer distinction of it. We covered this in the, um, newer, um, timeline that we, that we found. Yeah. What life forms existed in the pre-Archean era? This one's a trick question. All right. I hope, I hope you said none, because there was, there was no life before the Archean era. That, that was the point. Uh, thanks for watching. That that wraps it up for today. Um, we might have more practice exercises for you um, lower down, but this is, this does it for the video. We we hope you enjoyed it. This was a bit on the more comprehensive side, but this is a complicated topic, so I hope you learned something. If you want help with more subjects or you just want to explore, feel free to browse to our site. We have plenty of other things we're working on. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.